Hello everybody, Strategy Games Todd here, and welcome back to Victoria 2 A to Z, the Curse series, where I play all the interesting nations from A to Z in Victoria 2 HPM. Now today we're going to be taking a big trip to Central Europe for a Bavarian adventure because Bavaria starts with B. I've never played Bavaria before, but I'm excited because I'm pretty sure you have to try and compete with the Prussians and become a great power, so the Prussians do not curb stop you in an attempt to form Germany. Luckily, I can switch the reactionary party and use them to build some factories in my states that hopefully will be profitable. A quick way to get some more score if you're lacking in military score is just to create some generals because they increase your score by one at the beginning of the game so you just get free score. There aren't many good decisions for Bavaria but once we become great power we can form the South German Confederation which is a really kind of a disgusting state that you can form but right now we can do this the Walhalla which gives us prestige. Our ultimate goal here is to unite Bavaria, Ruttenberg, Baden, and this little tiny Prussian Putten, Samargen, into one state so we can form the South German Confederation, and then we'll be able to contest the Prussians in the north with our increased pop size. Oh boy, the Prussians are at war with the French. I'm not really sure what this will result in, but I don't particularly care. I'm about to get great power as soon as Belgium drops. I have more score than them. And there it is, I'm now considered a great power, so I can nationalize the industry, which will be very good, and it also gives me the decision to form the South German Confederation. So I'm going to start trying to spear my neighbors. Austria declared war on me for reparations. I can't fight them. We're going to have to peace out. I'll be back for you later, Austria. You're a bully, you know that? I'd like to declare war on Austria-Hungary right now because they're pretty weak but i can't because we still have a truce from that stupid reparations war austria is such a bully that must be dealt with the germans are at war with the austrians to try and make them admit hegemony however i'm also going to declare war on the austrians and hope that i can get the war score needed to assert my own hegemony before the germans do wish me the best and the Germans have taken a ton of land, but I've taken Vienna, which means I've gotten the war score I need to get them to admit hegemony, and I just punked the Germans out of adding these nations to their spear. Now that we've taken Ruttenberg and Baden from the Austrian spear, the only thing left to form the South German Confederation is Samarigan, which is a Prussian puppet. However, since they're in my spear now, I can make an attempt to pull them out of that spear, and directly under my spear. And there it is, we have freed Samargan from the Prussians, and now we just have to put them back in my spear, and then I can form South German Confederation. Poor Austria just had to release Krakow as an independent state and lost 43 prestige. Certainly not the Austrian game. The Prussians have declared war on me. And that's not good at all, because I don't know if I can fight the Prussians in my current state. They have a lot of troops, generally. And with that, the war is over and the Germans are willing to give me control over all the members of their spear with German culture. Thank you very much, Germany. This was a great war. Next time, don't attack me and this won't happen. And now that we've finally gotten all of these areas in our spear that we need to form the South German Confederation, we can do it. And then we get this beautiful, or maybe ugly depending on how you look at it, bluish green color and an epic new flag. Welcome to the South German Confederation. Ugh, now the Austrians have declared war on me, trying to release a nation from me. You bully, Austria. 
I defeated the Austrians with the help of the Italians, and now we can peace out. Perfect. I really need to bulk up my military, or Austria is just going to come for me again. So, big changes have to happen. Lubeck just had rebels that overthrew their government, but they were trying to create a united Germany. So now I get to inherit Lubeck. That's incredibly cursed that I now own a little colony of Lubeck over here, but whatever, it's free states. And here it is, we have the unification of the German Empire event where uh, you can either say yes, you like this, or no, you don't like this. But I think I like this. So I'm gonna attempt to become Germany. And now we have become the most cursed German empire you will ever see in your entire life because we have annexed all of the states that were in our sphere, but not the other states. I'm looking at you, Prussia, and for some reason, not Brunswick. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you but these particular states now need to be brought under my reign and I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that my first order of business as the German Empire will be to take back Brunswick because they are currently separating me into two uh, uneven pieces and that has to change and there we go, we got Brunswick, which leaves only one more German nation for me to defeat before we have smooth sailing. As my second order of business is Germany, I think I need to teach Prussia that there can only be one German nation in this world. Goodbye, Prussia. Well, the cursed German civil war is still going on, but the Austrians are now at war with me as well because the Italians wish to liberate part of their country so I guess we're going to have a uh, more war and more blood and more death and fight two wars at the same time so I've beaten the Prussians enough to win the German Civil War I now get to annex the Prussians and form big Germany I am still at war with the French and the Austrians though so this is about to get crazy. I'm going to add the war goal to acquire Alsace-Lorraine from the French because I should be able to beat him here. And we'll see how this goes. Well, the war didn't go particularly well, but I did rack up enough war score during the battles to acquire Alsace-Lorraine. And that's really all I wanted. So peace is finally upon the German Empire after that disgusting civil war. Honestly, that was horrible. Don't ever form Germany's Bavaria. <laughs> this is such a weird Germany. The capital is in Munich, and it hasn't moved to Berlin. That's hilarious. Now, Germany is always a little late to the colonial game, but Vietnam will be a pretty fitting place for the Germans to have because it's pretty valuable and nobody else really wants it, except for the French, who I can beat pretty easily. Now, the Danish have two of my core states here. And uh, they're also guaranteed by the British, but I can't imagine the British will do much to stop me from invading Denmark. So, uh, I don't care. I'm taking Denmark. Did not realize the Russians could get involved. Not sure how the Russians could get involved. Uh, Russia's gonna pay, though. The Americans are here, too. I'm not sure why. This is giving me very much uh, World War II vibes at war with the Russians and the Americans and the British. Um... You guys gotta wait it for a couple years on that one. The Austrians have gotten in on this too somehow, so I'm gonna have to call as many people as I can, including Italy, who really stink, and hopefully Belgium. This conflict has been blown so out of proportion. The Russians were allied with the British, and the British were also allied with the Americans. So when I declared war on the, da the Danish, all of those countries joined, and now I'm at war with half of the great powers. It's crazy. Oh, and now the Austrian-Hungary has joined the war. This is so bad. I'm at war with literally everybody. I managed to siege down Vienna, and now that will allow me to remove Austria-Hungary for the war so I can focus on the Russians, who are mounting a successful counteroffensive. And now that the Austrians are gone from the war, the Russians are willing to peace out for my core. That was like the worst thing I've ever done to regain a core state. That was horrible. A rebellion has broken out in my country, and that has caused the French to declare war on me. I think the French did not see what happened to the Russians and the UK and the Austrians because 
they would clearly know better than to do this. You know, the French are not much compared to the combined forces of the Russian and the British armies, so I have been able to defeat them, and now I get to take Ardennes and further expand the German Empire. Mmm, that is beautiful. Looks like France did not like that defeat very much as the socialists have risen up. Nice work, France. Average Germany gameplay. Oh my gosh, so many socialists. Luxembourg has decided that they'd rather not be part of my spear and instead be part of my nation, and that just gives me more pop, so yes, please. Mmm, look at those sweet borders. Now, I don't have very many friends. In fact, I'm only friends with the Ottoman Empire, who don't do me much good in any military conflicts. So I'm going to propose the League of Three Emperors. Uh, I'm probably not going to get any approval, but wait, I did. Austria-Hungary is now allied with me, and the Russians are now allied with me. This will give us much more power in Europe. I've created something of a strong colony here in Eastern Asia, and I'm also looking at a place in Africa that I can begin colonizing as well. I have taken Zanzibar, which is a decent claim, but it's not worth a ton. I'm not going to take the entirety of Africa this game as well, because it's not really historically what Germany was doing. I feel like Italy is always such a mess in this game. They never seem to do anything well. I mean, they're 31st great power, but they have a ton of pops, and they've somehow managed to release half of their states. What a, like, broken AI nation. I like how the game wants me to take Italy under my wing and spear them. <laughs> no way! The game is really underestimating how much I'm willing to stick up for the Italians. I've also managed to spear Egypt, which means I can build the Suez Canal. It'll be a costly endeavor. I don't have a ton of money, but um, yeah, let's build the Suez, shall we? And now that we've gotten the Suez, we get this other event that allows us to inherit Egypt. So <laughs> this is such a cursed alt history, honestly, that's disgusting. I also claim the German Southwest Africa colony, which gives me this decent area in uh, South Africa. It's pretty good as a staging ground against the British, so that's why it's super valuable. I've managed to put together quite the colony in Eastern Africa. I, this was not my intention, but I kind of got carried away with the colonial game, and now I own half of Africa. Something is telling me that the German economy is not healthy. Our number one <laughs> export is beverages. The Soviets have done the thing where they become communists. Pretty typical of the Soviets to do that in basically every Victoria 2 game. So I've decided to support Tartarstan in a uh, crisis against the Soviets just because I don't like commies. The Soviets are willing to settle in my favor. Thank you very much, Soviets. That's free prestige and weaker Soviets. <laughs> the Italians, who I allied for unknown reasons, don't ask me, uh, have declared war on Austria for their land back, and I'm supporting them because Austria doesn't look like they're in any position to do anything at all. The Austrians are willing to give up their lands, and that is all I needed to hear. <laughs> These are much better Austrian borders. Germany has canal fever, because this is the second canal I've built this game, the Kiel Canal. Very cool. The Russians have had a change of heart and have become just socialist. And so have I. For some reason, the socialists became the leading party in my country through the democratic election. So I guess we're socialists now. Isn't it a little late for a Congress in the Balkans? I mean, it's 1899. This normally happens in the mid-1870s. But I think we need to keep the Ottoman Empire strong to contest the Russians. The Ottoman Empire has agreed to the Congress, which is good because I get to uh, have these little states that I can potentially use against the Austrians. Also out of the Congress, I get the Cyprus lease and I get to have Cyprus as well, which is just honestly free real estate. The Ottomans are very good at giving me land. Russia just spit out Poland again. I swear, Russia cannot hold itself together in this game, ever. I'm going to war with Austria again because I'd like them to drop from GP so I can get the Annex Austria event, but they haven't dropped from GP yet, so I'm going to have to keep taking more states. 
It's kind of ironic that because of the amount of civil wars and mobilized wars I've had this game as I started as Bavaria, that Bohemia is my most populous state. Generally, it's not when you conquer it because you normally increase with a bunch of pops, but I couldn't do that because I started as Bavaria. Honestly, the Regency event is one of the worst parts of playing a monarchy in this game because it's just debuffs for no reason. I was not exactly paying attention to Russian politics, but they've been dismantled and <laughs> now they look like this. That's uh, that's special, really special. Austria and I are currently competing in this crisis. I'm backing, I don't even know who I'm backing. I just saw Austria backing Chile, so I backed the opposite. I'm looking forward to this. Well, the Swedes have joined me, and the Dutch and the United States have joined the Austrians. So, looks like this is going to go to Great War. Uh, unfortunate, but we'll be able to crush the Austrians here, so it'll be fun. The plan here is to invade the Netherlands first, because I feel like they don't have that strong of an army. And then we'll turn on the Austrians and eliminate them. The U.S. hopefully won't be able to get here very quickly. Uh, the AI for the U.S. in this game is hot trash. So we full sieged the Austrians, but the only thing left now is in the north, the Americans have invaded Sweden, and that means that I'll have to fight there too, so <laughs> Swedish offensive is a go. Finally, this war is over. The Austrians have decided to give me my demands. It only took going halfway around the world and invading Chile to get this peace deal, but uh, yeah, <laughs> peace. I got more territory off the Austrians, I got the Netherlands cut down to size, and the Austrians cut down to size. So hopefully that's it for fighting the Austrians in this game. I really only have one more target I have to deal with, and they're sitting up here looking mighty fine. I backed Serbia in a crisis, and the UK has backed the other side in the crisis. Hopefully I'll be able to get some backers here and we can go against the UK, but really I think I might be on my own. The crisis has gone to great war and that means that I am at war with the UK, Sweden. Surprisingly, France joined me in the crisis, but Italy joined against me. So I guess we're going to start by invading the Italian peninsula and then we're going to see what we can do against the UK. My allies include... Turkey, although I'm not really sure that there'll be much help. Japan, who are pretty strong, but also not the most reliable. So yeah, that's who I'm allied with against the stinky Brits. I can pretty much say that we've lost Southeast Asia without really making... At this point, I can pretty much say we've lost Southeast Asia because <laughs> I don't think I can stand up to India, so... Oh well, we'll be back. Actually, the Indian front is going pretty well, because Japan somehow landed all of their troops here. And we are cleaning up, and I am taking out Malaya. Very cool. The African front has been a big win for us. We've managed to push all the way into Nigeria in the south. Uh, the British aren't sieging this one province. But besides for that, it's been, an, it's been a win. Um, and over in Asia, the Japanese have almost sieged all of Bengal. So yeah, it's going very well. You know, the British really treat their allies fantastically. They let the Swedes get sieged down and they let the uh, Italians get sieged down and they took all of their troops to Africa in order to defend their colonies and then we wiped them. The British are just such a team player. We have won this war. Uh, I'm not going to be able to meet all of the Ottoman demands, but we get to cut the United Kingdom down to size and a whole bunch of other things that other people have uh, demanded. So now the war is over and we have destroyed the British. Unfortunately, the British are still beating me in industrial score because I couldn't dismantle them because I didn't have enough infamy during that war. Unfortunate. Oh man, what happened to Canada in that war? That's so disgusting. <laughs> Who is Rupert and why does he have all this land? From the look of it, Asia is having a great time this game. China westernized and became 
a hot mess because all the little states broke free from them. India was shattered because the British let go of half the states went to, to rebels and everything else is kind of intact except for the Russian stuff that got deleted after Russia was dismantled. So good day to be an Asian country, I'm sure. I know it's not cool to beat up on the weak, but the Austrians just look so weak, so I had to humiliate and dismantle them. Yikes, Austria was really put down in this war, seriously. That is probably what's best for the region. I love it when the Belgians get run over by the French in the second Ukrainian liberation of Bessarabia. Why? Oh, late game Victoria 2 is disgusting. The Polish want me to join the war of Polish aggression against the Chinese liberation of Guangxi Guangxi against Beijing China. And as quickly as that war started, it randomly ended and I did not get a chance to step on the French. Unfortunate. I was looking forward to that. Well, that's it for this game. I had a lot of fun. Bavaria, fun country to play. It kind of plays out like nerfed Germany because you lose so many pops and the opportunity to grow your pops at the beginning of the game that you're kind of nerfed because you don't start as Prussia, you start as Bavaria. Uh, the Munich capital location also kind of sucks because anytime you go to war with the Austrians, you have to keep a stack there or they'll siege it down. But I had a lot of fun. I think I created the most cursed world in this playthrough than the previous ones in the series. Uh, Asia is just a fine example of that. Uh, Okay, I don't, I don't want to look at that anymore. But yeah, I had a lot of fun. The next country we'll be playing is actually Belgium, a country that I worked very closely with this game. And I'm looking forward to that a lot. We were able to get um, first great power. The US is kind of an unstoppable machine with the amount of industry they can stack. So they almost caught us. The British are in third place. And yeah, everybody else, kind of China's surprising to see on the list, and Norway, but everything else is pretty normal. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment about which nation you're most excited to see me play in Victoria 2 A to Z. Uh, and I will see you next time in the Belgium video. Bye.